Hi everyone, I'm Elliot, he's Grant, and we're gonna ask some questions on rapid transformation. How do you prime the business for IT innovation? Well, what is IT innovation, Grant? I think the core of it is using IT in new ways, leveraging technology to make an organization more agile and more efficient. What do you think? Have I missed anything? I don't think you have. Uh, you know yourself that you know, we're constantly talking to customers around what benefits we can bring to their operational teams, which ultimately is done from the technology we can deliver to them to give some efficiencies around performance. I mean, straight away, I can instantly think of products or workloads that you think are quite static like databases and we've got with era a, a product there that can help you improve the performance the deployment times and the management side of things and we've got a number of customers that are seeing that benefit as well and i've dived straight into it to what we can offer as innovation but, but what are you seeing uh, from your perspective well i think you know if you're priming for it innovation there's two ways that you can approach it you can do it piecemeal and you can start with a workload you spoke about database Another example of that is VDI. That seems to be quite popular at the moment with everybody working from home. Um, and you might start small or you might embark on a full digital transformation strategy. You might get a consultant in um, from an external consultancy firm to help you define that plan over the course of the next three to five years. What we generally advise in either of those situations is start with the analysts. Look at what Gartner, Forrester, IDC all have to say about digital transformation. Spoiler alert, we do feature in some of those reports, right? But they all have some impartial advice on how you might be able to embark on starting an IT innovation and digital transformation strategy. Well, I think it depends on, on what sector you're in, Grant, right? I think we need to be conscious of the fact that, you know, due to the pandemic at the moment, if you're in the public sector, travel and tourism, hospitality, just to name a few, you need to save money due to the constraints that COVID has had on your organization. So in that instance, you save to operate. The money wasn't there in the first place to reinvest somewhere else. Um, if you're not in that position, if you're fortunate enough to not be in that position at this current time and you want to stimulate growth, the obvious answer, I think, is to reinvest into the organization. Do you not think? I'm keener on the latter part. I mean, look, we should all stay for a rainy day, absolutely. But uh, that's when I've got my own pot of money at home because I don't know, something may break. When you're a business, it's important to stay for the rainy day, but you've also got to look at where you spend that money to ensure the business grows and moves further on down the line. We've spoken a bit before uh, around VDI, but really when we look at what VDI brings to a business, it, it removes a lot of... The, the consumption of power and energy yeah. and time within the business, which means that if you bring it into a data center, you save power on, on, on money, on power and cooling around there as well. So, yeah, understand the rainy day prophecy around it, but also I'm very keen on people looking to the future because that will carry the business forward. But I guess you're thinking further, right? You know, there are many, there are many cogs to a growing business, right? Not all of them need greasing at the same time. I heard that the other day. Love it. And I think if you're effectively going to plan where to reinvest back into your organisation, it's helpful to have a gauge on savings up front, right? Enter cloud economists. What's a cloud economist, I hear everybody asking uh, towards their screen? Well, it's a team of people that we have here at Nutanix that will assist you in writing a bespoke total cost of ownership illustration that will help you identify by investing in our platform how much money you can save over the course of the next five years. By the way, IDC did an impartial review of that and saw that most organisations will see around a 62% total cost of ownership reduction over five years. Now you've got that information that's bespoke to you, you're empowered to work out where you can reinvest that money, which is really, really key. So I think that's a good thing to start off with in identifying how and where to reinvest. We've spoken a lot about efficiency, well, we certainly have until this point, investing to save. But on the face of it right now, that may not seem that easy to do because capital expenditure for many organisations is being reserved in the event that we don't really know what's going on or what's going to happen in the immediate future. So I think, observing what's going on in the market right now, there's going to be an increased adoption of subscription services. Now, Grant, the question to you is, at Nutanix, can we help with subscription services? 
Absolutely. The business is founded uh, on subscription services. It's, it's you, know, you and I are very much used to it in this current day and age around how we consume the certain resources. Uh, and Nutanix have that subscription built into the business for the core platform and the other portfolio products outside of that as well. I was thinking too, I mean, the question is all around about how can IT help the business? IT is the business, in my opinion, mm -hmm. as well. You yeah. know, without yeah, there was a time where IT sort of gave some direction as to what the business done, and now the business is in front of IT saying we want this and we need that. Again, there's a bit of a reset going on while people hold back, and, and but you've got to look to the future. Putting a pause on it is fine, but you've got to have a process to where you press play on it as well. So yeah, absolutely, and that's where that subscription helps you. You pay for what you need yeah. today while money is tight. And then at least you get to a position in the future where you've already done those transformations, those innovations. Yeah, I see big, you know, two big words there that, that obviously draw some cause for concern, survive and recovery. Well, I've actually seen some examples, right, as a result of this pandemic where there's been a force to beneficial change. I don't want to see, say positive change because there's nothing that's positive um, that's come out of this situation, but beneficial change for organisations. I was party to a CIO roundtable the other day. And it was about 15 CIOs talking about how COVID has affected their organization and their plans. And there was a common consensus throughout all of them that their digital transformation had sped up as a result. And I think about it, right? People have had to uh, prioritize projects that were previously a little bit further down the line to ensure that they can enable things like work from home or eliminate printing or online signatures. Um, one CIO stood up, or virtually stood up, because he was on a call, right? But he stood up and he said, that we've delivered a three-year strategy in six months, which I thought was incredibly powerful. So we, we do speak a lot about recovery and survival, and it's very relevant. We have to be sensitive to that. But there has been some beneficial change and digital strategy sped up as a result of COVID and the pandemic. We'll start with cloud, right? Um, I believe a successful digital transformation will need to leverage cloud technologies as a foundation, right? I think the foundation needs to be there first. At Nutanix, what cloud means for us, you know, we, we see um, the, the world through a hybrid cloud lens. So what that actually means is that on-premises, you may choose to run a private cloud on Nutanix. That's Nutanix software running on top of your hardware platform of choice. You may then wish to run Nutanix software in the public cloud on bare metal services, and we partner with AWS and Azure to enable you to do that. And we've seen that this provides the automation and agility required um, for a digital transformation. Most importantly, and it's that word again, in the most efficient way, because not all workloads make sense to run in the public cloud 100% of the time, because they may run dormant and you're actually paying for that. So it actually makes sense to have a hybrid cloud strategy and work out what workload fits where and I think that's key so you have to put a lot more thought about that what do you think yeah I agree I think you're missing out on, on, a, on an old saying as well that, that used to factor in I can't remember who the vendor was people used to talk about but you know you'd never get sacked for just buying this particular vendor uh, we're getting to a position now with that those cloud providers where you're not going to get sacked for buying one but you really should look at possibly all three of them and, and how they can be brought into that hybrid cloud model. You mentioned one cloud provider, but there's multiples out there and they all have different features and benefits. And in my focus yeah. for an operational team, for the excellence that comes from it is, how the team's going to be able to work with these new platforms because they're not like the on-premises, the enterprise cloud infrastructure that Nutanix provides. And in those cases, we have pieces like Calm that allows you to build orchestration yeah. and automation into it as well as a marketplace that, or an app store, should we say, that's for your end users, but then have that support across those different cloud providers, but keeping a single pane of glass and that's therefore a single operational model across it and tool set. So, yeah, all four. Right. Is Can I just jump in there quickly, mate? I just want to say, look, how do the folks, you know, that are watching this video realize the power of the technologies you've just spoken about, right? Because it all sounds at this moment a bit pie in the sky and you might read a web page on it or watch a video, but how can you actually test Nutanix? Q, test drive, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You didn't, you didn't need to walk me into that one. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> thanks, Elliot. And I use that myself. So anybody who goes to our landing page, test drive, I think it's the top right-hand corner, click on it, you get access to a cluster for four hours that then gives you automated labs or guided labs to go through some of the stuff you and I've spoken about, those pieces around orchestration, automation, or look, 
just you've got an environment that remains on premises in the data center and that's what you're going to manage so yeah test drive nice to you lovely thank you so you can't do all three can you you absolutely cannot um it's that classic triangle if i save i can't invest which means i can't innovate if i'm investing i'm innovating but i'm not saving whereas i'm i'm of the fact that you can't do all three at exactly the same time but you need to have a, a for far a view to the future as to which one's going to lead to the right one if you invest in the right platform in the right products in, and have the right vision that's innovative around it as well ultimately that will save you so it's a triangle that can never be happen at the same time but it all nicely feeds into each other and with nutanix innovating investing in nutanix deploying that into your environment gives the innovation that we provide for all of our customers and in turn saves time and operational duties as well as providing great performance and all the other features around it. What are your thoughts? Well, I was actually going to try and be a bit brave and disagree with you when you said that you can't do all three at the same time because I think you can do all three, but you're right, you don't do all at the same time. My view is this, and by the way, full disclosure, I'm a sales guy, so investment is important. Right. You need to invest. And if you invest correctly over the course of time, you can save money. We've spoken about that with total cost of ownership reduction. And you have to invest to innovate as well. If you're moving from the old way to the new. You can invest into your infrastructure and innovate that way. Great. I'm glad we're in agreement on that. Hey, Elliot. Great catching up with you. Always insightful. Yeah. I've been Grant. You've been... Elliot. Let's do an awkward digital high five. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs>